Good afternoon. My name is Joey Donnelly, contributing to the Saskatchewan Heritage Project COVID-19 Culture. I'm joined today by Jane Ibisiki Tamuno Bear. Hi, Jane. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks so much for telling us about your experience with COVID-19. But before we begin, I'd like to know a little bit about, uh, about yourself. Tell me about where you grew up. Well, <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I grew up in South. I'm originally from um, River State, Nigeria, West Africa. And um, I'm from the South South part of Nigeria. But I was born in the North, Northern part of Nigeria, Kaduna State. And with my dad's job being a customs officer, I had the opportunity to travel around Nigeria a little bit. So I grew up in a a little I grew up a little bit in um Kaduna, Ninja, Mina, and then we got transferred to Lagos State. And Lagos is the southwest of Nigeria. So I grew up a little bit there too and then I came to Canada when I was twenty one. So I think I did a little bit of, of some growing up in Canada too. <laughs> Cause now I'm in my thirties. So <laughs> Goodness. And I've been here nine years now, and so yeah. That's... So almost ten years, and and all of it's been in Saskatchewan. Oh yeah. Well, I spent a little bit of uh, my twenty sixteen summer. So when I finished school, um, the University of Saskatchewan in um twenty sixteen, I got a summer job in Kenora, Ontario, mm-hmm. and I I was so excited to go because I've never you know left Saskatchewan before. So I went to Kenora in um I started my job in May. And I ended in October 2016. So yeah, I spent a little bit of my summer in um, Ontario. And then since then, it's been Saskatchewan all the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then from there, you went to Shonovan, is that correct? Yes, I went to Shonovan in 2017. I stayed in Shonovan for a little bit of um, almost two years. And then I moved to Swift Current April, no, uh, March 28, 2019. Yeah, and I guess that's where I first met you yeah. when you walked in at uh, my full-time job at the Southwest Newcomer Welcome Center. Yes. Uh, yeah, tell me about uh, just your experience while living in Saskatchewan and working in Saskatchewan. Well, so Saskatchewan for me, um, it's a mixture of both. So generally, I come from a small town back home. But at the same time, I'm used to living in a big city, right? But then Saskatchewan has a mixture of both. So you stay in Saskatoon, and Saskatoon, for me right now, feels like a very crowded place. Mm -hmm. And staying in a small town in Swift Current, for me, it feels like um, staying... I feel like I'm staying in a... What's the word now? In a government... um, so back home, we call some special places government reserved areas, so like GRA, very quiet and well preserved. So when I leave Swift Current and I drive down to Saskatoon, Saskatoon feels like a wild life for me, sort of say. But um, living in Saskatchewan for me, it's been good. It's had the um, it's been a mixture because mm-hmm. the weather sometimes it's not what you want it to be. But overall, it's been a good um experience, you know. Nine years in Saskatchewan has been good. And uh, where do you work right now? I work for um, Southwest um, Homes in um, Swift Current. So what type of work does that involve? Uh, so I am a direct support professional. And I work with um, clients with um, special and intellectual needs. And... Uh, I guess when you first started to hear about the pandemic happening, uh, what were your first indications that, you know, this could be something quite serious? Wow. So um, the first time I literally um, understood what the pandemic was, was when China was having this um, lockdown. And it that was when it really, for me, it dawned on me that it was getting real. And then... Fast forward to March in Canada, we started having the lockdown. We started having people who tested positive for it. So, and um, so um, I grew up in an era in Nigeria where we had um, so like we had a little war concerning Christians and Muslims, and it was called the Sharia law, and 
it got really bad where the, some of the Muslims were burning house, the Christian houses, and then we had to get carried away to go stay in a different place and we were locked in for a little bit of a while. So I've experienced a little bit of a lockdown, but not in a pandemic situation. So when it came to this, like I was at first, I was really scared and, you know, worried because back home I have um my dad who's um he's diabetic and he's been we've been trying to manage it for the past five years now and you don't you don't want to have to um start thinking of what if in a situation like this because the news we were hearing is that if if older people get tested like test positive or if older people con contract the you know um contract COVID-19 it gets it's tough for them to handle and all of that so for me I became I became a research analyst for my parents so I would always go online the first like the first month I'd always go online and like look for things to like help them leave a better life so to say for those weeks of them being at home so I try to like encourage them not to go out too often and then in that moment I was responsible for sending them you know um financial help to make sure they had their needs met and like for my dad we had to get his medications for like a month in stock for him so that he did not lack medication or he did not run out of medication and then somebody had to leave the house to go get it and then, um, fortunately for me, at that time, I had filed for taxes. So I got um, some coins back <laughs> mm. for, ta for taxes. And I was able to, you know, provide them what they needed at that time. So um, it was scary. And I was trying not to show my fear because I'm a very emotional person. Like, I want to always have a solution to something. I want like, I really wanted to be home. Like, I wanted to be home and, like, help my parents and, you know, just make sure the that time for them was not too lonely and too scary but at the same time it actually brought us together in a way because every day i was talking to my parents like 30 to one hour a day for like a month i was always communicating with them so how are you feeling today did anybody go out don't forget to wash your hands don't forget to do this you know drink your water eat your fruits or if you don't want to eat the fruit i had to teach them how to make um the veggie juice with the carrot celery ginger and all of that you know, just to help them boost their immune system in a different way than what they're used to. So, like, COVID has changed me into this person who I never liked to eat fruits <laughs> before now. <laughs> but all of a sudden, I'm eating fruits and my veggies and I'm trying to be more, um, be more, what's the word now, um, active be more active health wise because um you get tired of just sitting at home during the lockdown so now you have different exercise reg regimen to follow you can do at home and then for me it gave me the idea to kick start my youtube channel <laughs> so that's one one good thing i got from covid so now i have my youtube channel and in that um space for me i'm trying to document my life experience in canada and i'm it's for me it's more like my saskatchewan living journal so yeah covid mm -hmm. has but it's it, it came with its good and bad if i can say so so tell me more about this creative side that the pandemic has has brought out oh so actually it started from my manager so like she had this awesome idea where because our clients couldn't go out to do anything and they couldn't get families to come visit them so they had we had this idea of work to do visual um recordings so like somebody was gonna cook a meal and then record herself cooking and then we can play it on the television for the clients to watch and then because i like to sing and i was gonna sing and record myself singing and then bring it to them and then play it for the clients to watch so every staff had a different thing they were gonna do so I just figured, you know what, why not record how you're spending your life during this pandemic and then just put it online, you know, make other people feel entertained. Because for me, I was going on YouTube to watch how other people were surviving during the pandemic, right? Because um, 
I've, I've always wanted to have a YouTube channel, but I wasn't ready. I felt like I wasn't ready or I did not have the time. And then you had COVID-19 come and everybody was staying at home, even though I still had to go to work. But I felt like it gave me more um, creative time. So I had to learn how to edit a video. I had to start watching videos of how to like film, how to feel comfortable in front of a camera, what kind of content people like to watch. And it's been a really good, <laughs> good uh, learning process. I'm like, yeah. So if you want to check out my YouTube channel, it's called I Am Plain Jane. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you like what you see. Because I have, um, for me, I have, I have a thing for cooking. I like to say I don't like cooking. But I enjoy when I cook because then it brings the creative side of me out. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a very fun journey so far. <laughs> Tell me about the feedback. Like, who's been watching these videos? Oh, my God. So, <laughs> so the first video I posted, I was scared. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And then I have friends from Cal my friends from Calgary who are watching. I have friends from Saskatoon. And then even back home, when I post on Facebook, I have my neighbors from all the way. And you know the funny thing? My parents and me, we've never had this video call before. So, like, the last time my dad saw my face, face to face, was when I left when I left home in um, 2010. So he saw my face for the first time through YouTube and he was not sure it was me because my brother had to, had played a video for him. And he goes, that's Jane. He goes, that's Jane. <laughs> so my dad calls me on the phone. He goes, you look different, young lady. That's you. And I'm like, yeah, that's me, daddy. <laughs> so I, for me, it's like a journal for them to just watch and like see who your daughter is now. You know, I haven't been home since I left and I get um so somebody actually from my high school sent me a message and goes oh do you act movies now and I'm like it's not a movie it's just YouTube it's just me recording my life but it's been fun <laughs> it's been um it's been a fun process so far but yeah so I still need more subscribers too so um just getting pumped to like think of more fun ideas more um teachable ideas for people so yeah. So you like to focus on the educational or what are some of the other topics you like? Um, so my need for YouTube, I don't want to, I, I try not to box myself in a, in a, um, in a, in a certain space. So my niche is to share my immigration experience so far. Um, so like other um, international students who are in the process of like graduating, give them information of how to apply for jobs, how to apply for your work permit after school. Because when I was in this, when I was in that shoe, I didn't have the information. And I had different people tell me different things. And for me, if I can just sit down and write, map out how I did mine to get, it would help somebody else. So like there's, a, there's the education part, and then there's the fun part where I make recipes, and then there's the fun part, another fun part where I do, hey, spend the weekend with me, or mm. clean with me, or watch me clean, and you know, just stuff like that. And yeah, it's a mixture of mm. fun, entertainment, and then the educational part. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, because the pandemic happened, it's affected a lot of people's ability to travel, to, you mentioned not being able to leave your house, but, but had you planned to, to go back home at, at some point soon, or...? Yes, I had plans to go home this December. I was going to go visit home this December. But right now, um, I think I'm going to leave that to 2022. We're going to see how that goes because um, I'm still a little, um, no, I'm not going to use the word scared, but I'm still a little um, cautious because even if things are dying, like things are slowing down, people are still getting a, a, in... Um, People are still getting, con people are still contracting mm. the disease. Like it's still, it's still alive. You mm. get like it's once it, I know it's summer. Everybody wants to go out and have fun and all of that, but COVID is still alive. It's still um running around. So for me, the new normal. Like I was telling somebody the other day, putting on your max and going out is just like having your winter jacket and your mitts on now. Mm. That's that's how I see it now. So that there's a max in your car, there's a max in your handbag. Cause like you go into a space and you don't have your max on you, you see the look everybody gives you like, mm. hello. <laughs> mm. But yeah, traveling is not on my book right now. Mm. <laughs> Just doing things 
from in my living room. <laughs> so what precautions are you taking? Oh my god. Um the other day I got a parcel from Amazon and the moment I picked it up from my mailbox, I just literally disinfect before opening it, wash my hands after doing that, and then you open the parcel and then you have to clean, disinfect what's whatever is inside all over again. So like this is you know how we had this nonchalant attitude before. I have a, a hand sanitizer in my car. Like when I go in and go out, I have to sanitize my hand. I have spare gloves in my handbag, and like having the conscious, um, 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 conscious um, mind of not standing too close. I I haven't hugged anybody since February. <laughs> So that's that's one thing that I never knew it was gonna be possible or like should just shake hands with anybody. It's not since February, no. And then even smiling now, it's like people just nod their head now and you know say hello hi. And um oh my god, I clean my apartment every day now. Like the slightest dust for me, just I just have to wipe like mm. you know, and then. Would walk, we've been more um, cautious and more careful in the sense that you have to bring a change of clothes when you come into work, and then when you're leaving, you need to change that clothes and put something else. So it's been very educative, mm. you know, and um, transformative in mm. a way. So, yeah, it's been good. The changes have been good so far. What about? financially jane is it has it been a struggle just uh you know if, if you if you don't mind uh, tell me oh, a bit yeah. about that definitely so you know how um the government had this program where canadians were being um assisted financially i didn't fall into any of those categories because first and foremost i'm still considered an immigrant and my pr application is still in process right now so i did not qualify for any of that and then I'm considered a single person with no dependents. So you're not seen as somebody who needs any financial help, even though you don't make close to the um, required minimum wage or the family income threshold or what, all of that. And then you can get a second job also because your work permit gets... Like my work permit right now is closed because I applied for permanent residency through the provincial nomination. So, um, not being able to get a second job to supplement my income has put a strain into how much I can help my family back home and help myself. And it just makes you learn how to be a strict budgeter. <laughs> so I, I, before now, I used to have this, um, um, uh, what's it called? Sense of eat more veggies and then life is going to be good. But right now, I'm trying to plant my veggies myself because <laughs> buying them every other week, is, <laughs> that's not visible anymore, you know? So, and then I'm grateful that, you know, you're going to give me some space on your farm to plant. So, like, hopefully it's going to help me save some coins. <laughs> but, yeah, it's financial. It's, it's been, uh, it's, 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 it's been painful a little bit. <laughs> well, we move. <laughs> Life is all about adjusting, right? I hear you there. And yeah, I'm looking forward to, to planting our garden together, Jane. Um, I'd like to move on to what's happening in the United States as well. Uh, with the death of George Floyd and, and the Black Lives Movement, Black Lives Matter movement um, is, uh, is in the conversation all around the world. And last week we attended a demonstration that happened in Swift Currents um, uh, in support of that movement um, put on by some folks in the LGBTQ community. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments about what you see on the television and, and your experiences as a, as a black woman in Canada. Whew, so that's a, that's a very touching topic to discuss about because in the last three weeks I've been trying to shield myself from <sighs> talking about it because um I watched the video and I think something in me died 
and then something another thing in me woke up like I, a seed was planted in me and that seed is me trying to be um bold i'm trying to be bold enough now to speak up for injustice because i was um one thing i one thing i know is i'm not black american but i'm african and i'm black and when people when people bring the the uh, idea that well you're not in the u.s you're in canada i just try to make them understand that racism is not far from anybody in canada i've experienced racism i have but i keep saying that to me it's not it does not quantify to what that man suffered that day do you get it's painful that when we went for the march in swift current i did not see the recognition the um recognition or the i didn't see it being received as something um as the way it should be received you get we did not get any government official come out and stand in solidarity or like support us and whatever it just felt like it was just a small community of people speaking up and then nobody else cared you hear my point but living in canada as a black person um i've had i've once had a professor tell me i couldn't take his english class because to him black people don't speak english and he didn't want me in his class i have had um I've gone for an interview before, and the moment I step in, they told me, oh, we didn't know you're black. We don't want a black person here. <laughs> and um, I had a job where I was called derogatory racial um, racial um, um, names that when I speak up, I got told I was being aggressive and I was being, I was scaring the staff with my tone, according to them. So it happens. But then the thing is, it's, it's a, they, you get a polite, it's for us, we call it the polite racism, systemic racism, organizational racism, where they pretend it's not happening, but it's happening. It's there. And then I just hope that moving forward, people would recognize it and speak up more now because when it happened to the last time it happened to me, my, one of, um, my, one of my, um, former job, I, I was mentally drained. It, if it, it, I, my health got affected, I would go to work and my blood pressure was shooting high and I couldn't concentrate. I was always having migraines at work because I was trying to make myself feel comfortable in an, envir in an environment that wasn't conducive enough for me to stay, you know? So it happens and um, the idea that we were not in the U.S. and we don't have to be involved, it doesn't make sense, like... My thing is everybody needs to be involved. You need to speak up. You need to speak out. And you need to um, um, break that barrier, you know. So I applaud the people in the U.S. for coming out and stepping up and even marching out, even in this, you know, pandemic. Like, I know people are trying to take the, uh, the required precautions. It's, it's, it's not easy, you know. A lot of, you know, a lot of people have committed suicide just this past month because they couldn't take what's going on. Like, it's it's hard. It's 400 years, if no more, of one race being undervalued, being um, emancipated in a way, you know. And it's, it's just, for me, the word is enough is enough, you know. So, like, my prayer, my hope is moving forward, people will know that, this is 2020 it's a different century and you don't want to make anybody no matter their race color size you know feel inferior in any way so and the fact that right now in canada the the the, the, the debate is for them to have a police reform you know i would love for that to happen because we need that mm -hmm. you you go to you see some cases where the cops are called in a situation where it, ha it gets to it gets to do with a, a person suffering from mental health issues and a lot of those police officers do not know how to de-escalate situations mm -hmm. all they know how to do is use force and put that person under your control in a way and mm -hmm. it doesn't work well for people with mental health it doesn't work well for innocent people like if Somebody does not understand why they're being arrested. You need to explain to them why why they're being arrested. You don't have to shove them on the floor like use your 
your badge or your gun or whatever on them. It doesn't make sense. Like, I just hope people understand that time has come for change to happen and it shall happen. A lot of people say that with the pandemic, it's giving us an opportunity to reflect and and to consider these broader questions like community policing or 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 even hygiene. You know, how do you think the world is going to be different uh, years from now? Now that this this pandemic has hit and it's caused so much damage economically, but it has also initiated so much social change. Um. So, um, you know how we have the millennials and then we have the generation um, Z. I feel like we're going to have innovative ideas come out through this pandemic. We're going to have brilliant businesses, business ideas spring up. We're going to have um, different means of interacting. Like people would not need, like, you know, right now, a lot of people are house hunting. But guess what? It, it's a visual process now. It's called virtual house hunting. So you don't even have to physically go into the space anymore. You can just get a video um, shot of the house and pictures and then you choose which one you want. So like physical appearance right now is something that not everybody's going to be embracing anytime soon. People are having visual weddings, bridal showers, baby showers, birthdays, you know. And it's fun. Like, it, for me, it's exciting, you get? And I feel like with that, technology is going to improve more. We're having Zoom is is expanding. Um, Google Hangout and all of those things are expanding. And then uh, one time I was telling somebody that I think Skype is dead, but somebody else is going to bring something better than Skype <laughs> very soon. And, you know, shares are skyrocketing. And then... Um, well, I feel like the world is going to change in a different way. And um, usually um, how people used to be non-challenged and free, it's not going to be the same anymore again. For, I, I think so. It's not going to be the same. Like right now, if I get a free plane to get to go home, I would like to extend it to two years time <laughs> because I still have that feeling like they need, I feel like we need time. We, we're going we're gonna to need time. You know, to recuperate and come back into a different normalcy, if I can use that word. But yeah, things are going to change. And I think it's going to change for the good, though. Hmm. Maybe just one more question, Jane. Like, during the pandemic, have you had any, like, uh, memories of childhood or, or songs or, like, traditions that maybe have come up that, that have given you comfort during this difficult time? <laughs> Memories of childhood. Um, or, yeah, just, uh, you know, something like a tradition that you might have uh, that, that's unique. Maybe it's cooking or maybe it's uh, a story. Or... So um, I remember when we had this, um, um, the Sharia law back home where, so like all the families had to be in one time, like literally the size of this room had like six, six different family members. So like I had, my mom had me and my younger sister and then my older sister, because my dad was not around, he was at work. And then my auntie who came to visit us had her daughter there too. So it was just us in one corner and then you have another family. So like there was this sense, we would never spoke the same language, but then because we found ourselves in that predicament and that that time, everybody around us became family. So before we sleep, when we wake up, we all go for, we all have this song we sing, and then we actually pray together. So like people from different cultures came together, but because we had the same religion, I would think so, it made us come together as one, and then we had that um, 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 bonding at that time. So right now for me, what I every when I during this pandemic, what I always remember was I would go on YouTube and like play classical Nigerian local songs, me being it be it Christian songs or just classical songs, and then just listen to like it makes you bring out the child in you. Even though we're adults, like 
it just made me, I wanted to be a child all over again. Because I did not want to have to think about whatever is going on in the world, you know. I just wanted to be young at heart. And then when I talked to my dad or my mom, I was just like, so remember when I was 10 years old and this? And then actually the other day, I was trying to make this soup my mom would always make. And I could not remember how to do it. So I'm like, okay, you need to be on the phone with me and like, tell me what to do. And then she goes, so I'm like, no, 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 no. You need to be. She goes, I would text him, like, don't text me, tell me what, just stay on the phone with me, you know? So, like, having that bonding and then that um, uh, time to sit down and then talk about things from your childhood, like, remember things like true um, um, ideas around, you know? It's, it's been fun. <laughs> it's really fun, but yeah, really good. And then I have pictures I always go back to just to go just you know have a glance and look but it's been here yeah, it's been really good and i've been learning my local language more too now because <laughs> mm. i call my aunt and i said auntie how do you translate this and she tells me like okay now i said how do i translate this so it's fun. <laughs> yeah it's good what's your local language jane oh so it's called okrika because i'm from so i'm from river state and my local government is called Ogupolo, but we speak um Okrika in my town. So because I did not grow up in Rivers River State, I grew up in, you know, a different part of Nigeria. I did not learn how to speak my tribe fluently. I can understand when people talk, but replying them is hard for me. So when my parents speak in our native local language, I reply them in English. But during the last three months, I've been replying to my mom. And then my mom goes, okay, okay, you sound good. That's good. And I'm like, okay, girl. <laughs> and then I call my aunt and I change my voice. Now she goes, I'm sorry, who is this? And I'm like, and then the local, and I'm like, hi, it's me. And she goes, sorry, I don't know. And I'm like, it's Jane. She goes, oh, how did you learn how to speak the language so good? I'm like, I've been practicing. <laughs> But yeah, it's been fun. It's been really fun. <laughs> so just, it helps. Things like that helps you to forget the lonely part of you living alone. <laughs> but yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your stories here thank today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. I like to... I like to talk. <laughs> but I talk about good things, so thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you.